We're bringing on the panel now. We're joined by Ali Clark, host of Mixed Breakfast in Adelaide, and on set with me here, Gemma Tonyuni from GT Communications. Good to see you, Gemma. Great to see the Pies win on the weekend. Oh, Chris. enough footy, <laughs> enough footy. I'm moving on to cricket now. Now, tell us about the voice. Is it dead in the water? Oh, I, it's not. It's not life, full of life, is it? I, I've been watching this with such interest. I, you and I have had so many discussions about this and I, I agree with you. I want to know what I'm voting for. And, you know, the Prime Minister is so... so uh, he, he has not done his best with this, I don't believe. For, no, for not at all. For somebody who has talked about it as nation building and something that is intrinsic to our culture as a nation and our growth as a nation, he hasn't matched that with the requisite action in terms of explaining how it works. Now, I'm going to put something to you and I'd, I'd love your, your view because you and I are both of the vintage... I'm, I'm asked the question. No. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I remember I was a journo when John Howard brought the GST to the table. And I made this point to someone the other day and I said it's the same concept. He had to explain to the Australian people exactly how it would work, exactly how it would impact them. And, yeah, that was a tax. This is completely different. But the premise is the same. It's change. It's fundamental change. People don't like change. And if you're the one advocating for the change, it is on you to explain how it's going to work. You are spot on. Uh, not just uh, John Howard, but Peter Costello at that time. Correct. They had to know every detail. Yeah. They had to answer every little well, question. Well, John Hewson worked out that you had to answer every little detail exactly. and he's still annoyed about it, you'd think. Well, I think what Anthony Albanese and others, uh, the mistake they've made here, is they, they didn't look at those sorts of examples. They looked at the Republican referendum. Right. And they decided that they lost the re Republican referendum by getting involved in the detail. Yeah. Well, no, that's, that's the wrong lesson. The, the lesson is get across the detail yeah. and and be prepared to tell people as much as they need to know. And even if even if you took that premise, right, do you not have to adjust your strategy as the circumstances around you change? So they might have come to the table going, well, this is how we think it's going to play out and we're taking our cues, as you said, from the Republican debate. But it, seemed, it soon became very clear that the undecideds wanted detail. And if you can't adjust with that and respond to what the people you are trying to convince... You know, they, all of these photos that they're posting about, you know, like Je Johannes Leek's cartoon, yeah. they're posting all of this content from safe Labor seats that are never in question. It's literally preaching to the choir and like, look at all of these people who agree with us every day anyway. They think we're great and they're all voting yes. Well, that's not where your problem is. I see no discernible public advocacy. I know None. people say there's a lot of money in the Yes campaign. There is, but I haven't seen a lot of advertising. But certainly I don't see key figures out there arguing their case strongly in the public but arena. But maybe that's because they can't, Chris. What are they going to say except for what they've already been saying? We need to do it. It's the right thing to do, be on the right side of history. OK, we get all of that. Brass tacks here. Well, they, they should be on here. They should be all, They should be answering questions and arguing. And I, mm. I think you're right. I think they're, they're scared of it. They also think that they can just leave it to Indigenous advocates, as if this is not but something but that is for everyone. That's, that's not even decided. It's like this, may I, if I may say so, it's the arrogance of suggesting that, you know, all Indigenous people think the same. It's well, like saying exactly. all Italian people think the same or all people from Victoria think the same. The Indigenous community is equally as divided and they, sh they are allowed to have different views. Well, I don't know about equally, but the point, the point is, too, everybody gets a vote. This is not a change just for Indigenous people. It's about the whole country. Correct. Let's have a look at some more of what Anthony Albanese he had to say today? The truth is that it is hard to win a referendum uh, without bipartisan support, but that is a, a position that Peter Dutton uh, has taken. He took before even the uh, committee process had been established uh, in the parliament that he said he wanted. Uh, the National Party didn't even bother to know what the question was before they said no. Uh, so... Uh, that's just something that, of course, will will have an impact. Yeah, it's tough. It's tough for Anthony Albanese, but that's why you should have perhaps worked harder to get bipartisan support or compromise beforehand. We managed to plug in Ali Clark in Adelaide uh, just a bit late to getting her plugged in. Good to talk to you, Ali. The, the, the voice, these polls. Um, the big question is whether it's too late now for the yes case to win this, for Anthony Albanese to reinvigorate the campaign and get people on board. What's your sense? Yeah, they needed to go hard. They needed to go right from the start and be really clear and give us the detail that we've wanted. Now, I love figures and facts, but they can say lots of different things. It's just a shame we don't know the specifics and why these numbers have changed. But, yeah, I don't know. I think the horse has pretty much bolted and it's really hard to get back.
Yeah, I've got to say, uh, right at the start of the year, and I, 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 I like the idea of a yes, as you know, and I've been uh, wanting to work towards it, but when they took so long, I, the other factor that I thought would come into play, Ali, is that I knew this government was going to run into strife. We knew they were going to run into strife on cost of living because of interest rates and electricity prices and whatever. And now that's really starting to bite, which it should. That, that undermines their authority trying to sell anything else to the, to the, the electorate now, right? Oh, of course. And this is always the thing. Unfortunately, we are essentially having to deal now even more and more with self. What is affecting us specifically? And when people are worrying about how they're paying electricity bills, what they can and can't do and buy from the supermarket anymore, larger, esoteric, bigger conversations that are just as important to so many people might not necessarily be cutting through. And so, therefore, it's easy for people to sit back and say, oh, I'm just not going to deal with that. Yeah, absolutely. And Gemma, we've seen reports today that uh, there's been a doubling, not huge numbers yet overall, but a doubling in the number of people in Victoria mm. who have their power cut off because yeah. they can't pay their bills. I flew up from Melbourne today at lunchtime. I spent the weekend down there and it was all anyone was talking about. Um, and that was the, you know, the lead story in the 10 o'clock news and 11 o'clock news down there. It is, it is, we are, we are running, you know, wide eyed off the edge of a cliff here. And I don't, uh, I don't understand how the governments, particularly of those states, and I say this coming from Western Australia, which has had a Dom Guest reservation policy in place, I think, since the Carpenter Labor government, a very long time, um, so not, not directly affected in that sense, but it, it is just this irresponsible, terrible policy that is hurtling towards this utopia that we know can't... That the emissions targets can't be reached in the time that they would like them to be reached at. And at what point do we say enough? Do we not... I think we have the privilege of looking to Europe and being able to go, OK, well, that didn't work and that didn't yeah, work and these yeah. are the... No, but no, genuinely... It's, uh, we do, we but instead uh, Chris examples. Bowen says we're going to emulate them. Well, well, then we'll be turning all the coal back on. If we're going to be emulating well, we'll Europe... Go, we'll, we'll go be, nuclear. We'll be going... Well, we should be going nuclear, mm -hmm. but we'll be turning coal fire back on because we won't be able to survive without it.